Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals of arousal, stress and anxiety. We will help you understand the different theories explaining arousal and performance, the various symptoms of anxiety and how stress can affect performance and our health. Let's get started. Arousal is a state of alertness or readiness of an individual to perform a task, motivating them to behave in a particular way. Arousal is controlled and regulated by the reticular activation system, which is located in the central cortex of the brain. Extroverts have lower levels of intrinsic arousal compared to introverts. Therefore, extroverts will seek situations of high arousal whereas introverts seek low arousal situations. There are a number of different theories linking arousal to performance. Drive theory suggests that a linear relationship exists between arousal and performance. It applies to gross skills such as sprinting or Olympic lifting. It also suggests that the more arousal the more likely that a well-learned skill or dominant response will be reproduced. Therefore, an experienced performer will complete the skill well because their dominant habit is well learned, whereas an inexperienced performer will execute the skill poorly as their dominant habit is not well learned. Criticisms of this theory are that it fails to address top performers failing under high arousal situations, such as a dropped catch or a missed penalty. And it fails to recognise different arousal levels suitable to different skills. Inverted U theory suggests that performance improves with arousal up to an optimal level of arousal. After this point, performance will start to deteriorate. Optimal arousal depends on type of activity, such as gross skills require high arousal, whereas fine skills require low arousal. Skill of the performer, a more skillful performer, the higher the optimal level of arousal could be. And personality of the performer, by which the more extrovert the performer, the higher the arousal levels will be needed to produce optimal performance. However, a criticism of this theory is that when arousal is too high, there is not always a gradual drop in performance. Sometimes it can be a sudden drop. Zones of optimal function suggest that rather than occurring at the midpoint of the arousal spectrum, there is an optimal zone in which a performer will achieve optimal performance. This zone could alter depending on the type of skill, level of performance and personality of the performer. Peak flow theory suggests that there is a relationship between task demands and the skill of the performer. Peak flow can be produced when these factors are at optimal levels to produce effective performances. Catastrophe theory is a variation of the inverted U theory. This theory suggests that the performance does not always decline gradually after the optimal level of arousal has been reached. Instead, it can be a dramatic decline or catastrophe, such as when a performer tries too hard. Point A represents the optimal level of arousal. Point B shows a drastic decline in performance. Now here, performance will head one of two ways. Point C shows performance still deteriorating. And point D shows performance recovery but it's important to learn that this does not always return to the optimal level of arousal immediately. One area that can affect arousal levels is anxiety. Trait anxiety, which is an inbuilt part of your personality, such as a tendency to react to competitive situations with tension and apprehension. And state anxiety, which is an emotional response to a specific situation which will commonly be temporary or change as the day goes on. Symptoms of anxiety can be both physical or somatic, such as increased adrenaline, increased heart rate and breathing rate, 
increased body temperature or nausea. And symptoms can be psychological or cognitive, such as apprehension, increased focus, worry, or negative thoughts. Anxiety can also be classed as stress. Stress is a perceived imbalance between the demands of the situation and the capability of meeting those demands. The stress experience, which is initiated by a stressor, may be positive or negative. If you feel you are capable of meeting the demands, you will treat this as a positive challenge. If you feel the demands are greater than your ability, then you will see it as a negative situation, which can cause stress and anxiety. The stress process involves environmental demands, which are dealing with the physical and psychological demand, such as performing a difficult skill in front of a large audience. Perception of demands, which involves the performer making a judgment about the specific requirements of the task and their ability to deal with them, such as feeling more anxious in a final for the first time. The stress response, which are the somatic and cognitive reactions to the judgment the performer has made, and the actual behaviour, which is the performer attempting to execute the skill. Their behaviour will often reflect their attitudes towards the task, such as muscle tension during an important shot. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos on everything you need to know about sports science. See you soon.